Bam, bam, bam. Shout out to everybody here on the live. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're feeling amazing. This is our life, baby. This is our life. You only have one, right? We don't know when it's going to end. Every single day could be our last. We need to make sure it's the best day of our lives. First thing we're going to do is take care of the human body because that's how you feel good. Did you work out today? I worked out. I sweated. I feel good. I'm stronger than I was the day before, baby. Shout out to each and every one of you. I'm going to hydrate with the lemon water. Do my thing. Do my part for my body, for my mind, for my soul. Hydrate. Shout out to each and every one of you. Stay hydrated. Do your thing for your body. That's the first thing that you could do. Control what you can control. We can't control Gary G. We can't control the SEC. Maybe one day. But right now, you can control what you can't control, which is to take control of your life and take control of your health. That's the number one thing that you can do for yourself. Shout out to everybody here on the live. Thank you for jumping on in. I appreciate each and every one of you for being here, sharing your most precious asset with me, and that is your time. Welcome to the Crypto Liver Show. Dear Lord, thank you for this opportunity to be with each and every one of you. Thank you for the gratitude that I wake up with every morning. Thank you for the gratitude that I go to sleep with. This life is a blessing. The birds and the bees are chirping. It's a beautiful day. Longest days of the year are coming. It's June here on the East Coast. We've been through a nasty, cold winter here in Boston. Now we're enjoying the beautiful buds of flowers and all the loveliness May God bless us all. Let's take a big sip of that lemon water. Let's get started the right way, like we do every single day, baby. Let's go. Yes. I'm alive, baby. So many people did not make it through the night. So many people are in a hospital right now. There was a car accident. So many things happened in the last couple of days. Let's just be blessed that we weren't in that melee and that we're actually still living healthy. 
doing our thing. Shout out to each and every one of you. Let's take a big sip of the lemon water and let's keep it moving. Ah, God bless each and every one of us for jumping on into the live. Let's go on in. Let's break it down. Bang, ba-doom, ba-dom, bam, bam, ba-bing. Shout out to everybody here on the live. Thank you for being here. May God bless each and every one of you. Again, you can never bless you enough. Shout out to you all. Thank you for jumping on in. Bitcoin, big news for the SEC. All right? SEC sues Coinbase. All right? And I've got the article up in here ready to rock. It's funny, I had to restart my computer this morning. Something funky happened. And next thing you know, everything kind of collapsed on me real quick for whatever reason. Um... Let me see here. Let me look at my history because I had it open already. Why well, actually go search for it again? Um, let's see if I can find it here. Here we go. I had everything. I had the circuit of courts document. And uh, yeah. So here's the, do. here's the deal. The SEC sues Coinbase. And we're also going to show you the tweet and everything. And just kind of give you a backstory of what's really happening. We're going to read through some of the filings. I'm going to explain to you what it means to be a plaintiff. What really happens. What's going down. Um, so we can have, you know, we can just break it down and talk about it. All right. Breaking it down and talk about it. So, uh, funny Coinbase crashes after SEC sues crypto. That's on zero hedge too as well. Um, but again, um, the coin crash, right? But Bitcoin went up in value and we'll talk about that too as well. We're going to break down Twitter. We're going to talk about so much today. Uh, follow me on crypto lifer. 33 at crypto life 33 here on youtube sam price i mean on twitter sam price we'll break it down for you like we do every single day so the first thing i want to talk about is we're going to go to the sec or even gary g right uh let's see what he uh let's see if he tweeted from his personal account um right sorry i gotta keep it moving all right now i'm having come on Come on. He's not even uh, verified, right? He doesn't care, right? He won't even pay to be verified. It's funny. Um, Coinbase alleged failures deprive investors of critical protections, including rule books that prevent fraud and manipulation, proper disclosure, safeguards against conflicts of interest, and routine inspection by the SEC. You simply can't ignore the rules because you don't like them or because you prefer different ones. The consequences for investing public are far too great. Uh, I, I, I don't know, man. It's It's... The, the idea is they're trying to use the 1934 law to pigeonhole us into these ideas, right? Uh, today, we charge Binance Holdings-based affiliate, right? So they charge Binance. They're charging the SEC. Something's happening. Um, you know what I mean? Uh, stop flooding my bags. I love that, right? And then let's go over this. I mean, this guy, uh, one of the biggest gym scammer, right? One of the biggest scammers in the game. I don't know who really pays this guy or what really happens with him or who he's connected to. He also sells alcohol, which to me is kind of despicable. Um, you know, alcohol kills so many people. He doesn't even look too healthy. Uh, I don't know if he, you know, whatever. I'm not going to discuss that, but he doesn't look too healthy at all. I'd rather invest in chain letters than some of this garbage. Wow, this guy is is out of his mind. Um, and it's a foot race, but nobody cares. So stupid. Do people understand that the SEC is saying that so many of the coins are worthless? Look, at he's going hard. For some reason, he has an agenda. Uh, you know what I mean? Um, I've had it with Soldano. Like, look at this guy. Coinbase seems more in the clear, but I wouldn't take any chances. Armstrong and our charge, though. If you have money with Binance, beat your fellow investors and get out as your assets are commingled. First out, might get your money. Look, at he's actually fudding Binance. Um, that's kind of scary, man. This guy is, like, he holds, he won't stop. Uh, you know, uh, wow. Uh, dude, he is, like, I worry about this man's mental health. Like, he will say anything and do anything. I don't think he has a soul, honestly, to be honest. Uh, so he's trying to tell you to FUD Binance, which is insane. Um, you know, one of the greatest exchanges in the world really holds its own. Um, pretty insane. Uh, and again, what's going to happen is other countries are going to pick up the slack. All right? Other countries are going to look at this and laugh and say, wow, they really want to go after their own citizens. They want to debacle their own citizens for whatever reason. They want to just trash their own citizens. I don't know why there's a battle on the citizens. Um, this guy, I mean, look at him. Overweight, barely works out, no muscles. When I'm his age, I will be a stock. You know, he's bald, doesn't look healthy at all to me. Uh, anyway, uh, again, I don't want to talk about people's health, but he doesn't look healthy. And when you're not physically healthy, you're usually not mentally healthy. 
Uh, I want to break that up as too. So when you look at someone's physical form, I'm not trying to be rude, and you see that they're not taking care of themselves, there's a disconnect in their mindset, in their lifestyle. All right? That's just easy to see. Look at this guy. He looks, he doesn't look like he's picked up a weight or worked out in a long, long time. Also doesn't look too healthy to me as well. So um, again, if I have a doctor and he's overweight, I'm not listening to him. I'm just making that really, really, really clear. Mental health is the ability to keep yourself moving every single day. So shout out to everybody here in the live. I appreciate each and every one of you for being here. May God bless each and every one of you. No matter what we go through, we go through it together. Uh, break it down, Bitcoin. I did see, you know, this is kind of crazy. And then why did Bitcoin just get a big move to the upside? Uh, to be honest, I believe it was a Brian Armstrong tweet here. So Brian Armstrong getting into the tweets. If I can find you, Brian. Um, figure he should be. Uh, why am I having such a hard time looking for these tweets? My team, can you find Brian Armstrong's Twitter and get it up for me? We got to have like a new. Um, I need like a new support system during this time. All right. Um, can I get Brian Armstrong's Twitter immediately, please, Jamie, in the research? I'm waiting for it right now. I'm trying to look for it. I believe this was him, but I guess that he doesn't verify. No, that's not him. But apparently he put out a tweet. And I want to read the tweet that he put out and talk about it. That's what someone said in my comment section, too, though. So I can't confirm or deny, right? Shout out to Cesar Cordero. Don't hate on the Fall I'm not hating on Fall Lucky Challenge. You could be bald all you want. I mean, look at The Rock. He's Jack Diesel in a good shape. You know what I mean? Um, you know, I don't care if you're bald. It doesn't matter if you're bald. He just doesn't look good. You know what I mean? Like, he looks like he has that, like, uh, what is it? Bread belly or whatever it is where you get the expanded belly. Uh, just doesn't look healthy. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying, hey, you could be bald all day. My dad died with a full head of hair, man. Thicker than most people, you know, he was not going to go bald, right? Um, and there's Stack holding me down. God bless you, Stack. You're the man, dude. Stack, you're the man, dude. You beat my team too. It's Stack. You're on the you're on the, you're on the payroll. Get Stack on the payroll immediately. So, after a crypto winter, Bitcoin is still standing. It appears to be having another renaissance. Take a closer look at this now familiar boom bust pattern. I admit it. I I, I see the same thing. On June 5th, Coinsway Derivatives Exchange and our CFTC Regulated Futures Exchange will launch Bitcoin and ETH futures contracts for institutions. See? Uh, here's what we built. Wow. Um, so Section 11 claims a 9-0 to Supreme Court warning to agencies and other that federal securities laws are not just whatever they want them to be. Limits imposed by Congress matter. Uh, that's a big deal, too. All right? I don't see the tweet people are talking about. Um, someone said that he said he's going to focus on I guess that was a FUD tweet, all right? So uh, I don't know who said that in my comment section. Someone said they're just going to focus on Bitcoin or something. Uh, I don't see the tweet. So, uh, But to me, it, it was like, dang, I don't know where Bitcoin took a huge spike to the upside. Also, people want to run out of their altcoins and just buy Bitcoin. Um, a lot of people probably bl bled into the FUD. And what they did is they didn't want to get their money back into fiat because they, they've already decided fiat's trash, right? But what they did is they probably put a lot of money back into Bitcoin because it was the safer asset. Um, I did point out the 7-minute had a bullish divergence. However, I didn't think it was strong enough to push us that far to the upside, honestly. And we got this mute, beautiful spike. I was looking for a short, really, as this continued. I wanted to see this continue, hit the top trend line, get rejected one more time, and then open up a short to the downside. I didn't have time. I started to work out. Next thing you know, I came back to the computer. This thing was mooning. Um, so pretty interesting move to the upside for Bitcoin. Really surprising. Even surprised me. I have to be dead honest with you. Um, I did see the divergence, though. And the divergence does tell you you're likely to get a move, but obviously a move that big and that fast was quite, quite interesting. Also, tight moving averages and the downtrend suggested we would fall down to the downside, possibly to 24,000. So even I was caught off guard, I'll be honest. The market's been very, very sketchy and very iffy. A lot of ups and downs lately. One of the, For me, I'll be honest, as a trader, one of the hardest markets I've ever traded uh, the last couple of days, five or six, seven days. It's been uh, a very rocky road, uh, even me. And I'll admit that, you know, So then my man says, Ron, he, so here's the deal, Ron. Here's what I'm going to tell you. Worth 150, near 70. I think you could let yourself go. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. You never let yourself go. Never. Never. All right? And just because you have money doesn't mean you're wealthy. All right? Bitcoin and cash can't be 
securities. Shout out to my man, GF Burke, in the game. People moving Bitcoin out to other exchanges. Lifers for the win. Liquidity grab to shake out the shorts. Yeah, grab those shorts out of the game. But again, we're back above this, this high volume node and there's a gap of the VRVP. Back above the 200 SMA, usually you can get all the way up and get a move to the upside. It could start looking like an inverted Bart Simpson here. All right. It could start looking like an inverted Bart Simpson. So I have to admit, I was wrong. I put an update this morning looking for a short. And uh, one of the first times in my life that I was like just dead wrong immediately. Like I wake up back and see this pump to the upside out of control. I figured the FUD would kind of create a little more downside and we'd get a little move further to the downside. So uh, I'm surprised and I have to admit it too. I don't like admitting when I'm completely wrong, but that was just a fast move to the upside in about 28 minutes. I went to work out, I came back and the market had ripped back to the upside. Uh, yeah, trust the tech. Don't worry about the weasel. Gary says, amen. Amen. I'd rather be worth nothing and know I'm a man every day than be worth 150 million and feel like a snake sellout. Amen. Amen. hundred percent organic autos garden. My man put it exactly how I would put it. Amen. Money is money, but family is just something different. Always remember this. Shout out to Elijah Bina. Shout out to all my beautiful lifers here. Shout out to everyone that jumped on in. Who saw me for the first time yesterday on the channel? Let me know if you're, if you're new. I put on 30 pounds and almost lost my business during COVID. Now I lost back those 30 pounds. Business bouncing back and building that crypto bag. Always keep grinding. Uh, this is the best channel. Let's go. Shout out to Jay Bella. Shout out to everybody here on the live. I appreciate you more than you would ever know. You are the reason I keep coming back. It's the energy. It's the love. It's the awesome, awesome people here on the live. I appreciate each and every one of you more than you would ever know. All right. I'm new again. Shout out to Jason Malik. It's been a long time, Jason. Shout out for you coming on back. Hi, bro. Hope you're good. Shout out to Gene, Remy, also, also Riero. Born again lifer, my man. Gary is a commodity. Morning lifers, keep your body running like high-end sports cars. As we get older, we lose bone density and muscle mass. If you aren't lifting, amen. Let's get those likes to 420. Shout out to Fud Expert. Shout out to Stacks TA. We're going to take a look at that. Uh, we camo here for you, boy. God bless you, man. Thank you. I'm not saying I like him or agree, but at that point, oh wow! So you're just gonna you're just gonna write yourself off at 70 years old as someone that can't continue to push? Come on, man. Let's get real. So what do we see happening for Bitcoin today? I mean, I did a Bitcoin update last night, and what we'll do is we'll break down the charts just openly and evenly. Go to BTC USD on KuCoin, all right? And I'm gonna delete all the work that I've done recently, and we're just gonna look at the price action yet again, like we do every single day and as i said before market structure has not changed much i like my three-day chart my three-day chart tends to give me a pretty good sense of what's happening and right now the three-day chart is still in a beautiful bull flag it reset all the way down in the stokes with the least amount of push down that we've gotten the flattest most lateral move and when you see lateral move in price action with momentum to the downside it tells me there's something brewing to the upside i wouldn't be surprised if another bank collapses Despite all this, the Fed will come out and to say they can't raise the rate. Higher, higher likely that they don't raise rates. Once the Fed stops raising rates, that's the pivot right there. And once they pivot, money's going to flow like water again. Um, it's going to be easy to to to. Uh, it's going to be easy for the big banks to borrow money from each other. It's going to be pretty crazy. We came right down to the support that we wanted to come to too. You know what I mean? Like it all happened exactly as planned. Twenty five thousand eight hundred, even to a bit of a low here. What was the low on the three-day candle so far? It was about 25350 I mean, that's the area that everyone talked about. Revisiting that area for a scoop up for Bitcoin to the upside. Uh, I'm thinking about putting $100,000 into Bitcoin. All right. Went over with my wife. We're going to put another hundred grand into BTC. All right. It's the, it's the safest place for it to go, in my humble opinion. You know, I've done the math. I've thought about it. I've looked at all different scenarios. Going to put a little money into real estate. Going to put a little more money into Bitcoin and continue to grind. And um, it's the first time my wife came up to me and she says, I want to put 100000 into Bitcoin. I said, all right, just let me know, babe. Let's get it done. Let's get it done. Uh, Casper about to bake bacon on the beach. Shout out to CSPR, man. I grabbed a bit more cash last night. Loaded up for the future. That's what I keep doing. I keep grabbing a little more Casper every couple of days. Just snatching it at these low areas because... It's retraced all the way down on the stochastic. So I see a Sammy cup in handy for Bitcoin. Measured move is 41,000. And again, we're at a very crossroads point. We lose this point. We'll probably go to that CME gap and get a dip down to the downside. I'm open-minded. Anything could happen. All right. I know nothing but the fact of my own ignorance. I'm just showing you an obvious market structure here. A beautiful cup and handle to the upside. 
Uh, the 50-day moving average coming for that 200. Eventually, you get the cross. Price action gets above this 200 SMA. And I kept saying we were going to break buck back above this. We got so close. So close. Uh, now, the stochastics are oversold. Also, swing up to swing up. Swing down to swing down. That's a hidden bullish divergence on the three-day chart. It says that we will continue to the upside. All right? I want to talk about these different ideas, you know, and just, you know, explain how patterns play out over time. I don't care what you're trading. If you're trading the NQ, if you're trading anything in the game, bang, bang, bang. I know you said Caspa, but my man said Casper. We got Casper and Caspa both in the charts, my man. See, we got Casper here about to make bacon on the beach, and you said Caspa. I was talking to both people. Don't get confused with Casper and Caspa. Uh, 30K in incoming. Us, Fed powerless. Amen. Looks like a bull flag on the five-minute time frame. 27,000 and then crash again. I don't know. I See, I don't say stuff like that. I go day by day. We get to 27K and we do our bearish retest and we show a bearish flag, then yes. The TA will tell you what to do. Stop making just outlandish statements that make no sense. All right? It, it, it makes you sound ignorant and it, it, it lets us know that you do not use, you use your emotions mainly to trade, right? Anyone that says it's going to go here and then go there, it, it, it lets us know you use your emotions to trade, right? And you can't use emotions to trade. So the Boston version of Casper. I love, yeah, Casper. Yeah, that's funny. I love the positive vibes. If you're a G for sure, God bless you. Thank you for being here. Gamer Johnson, Pepe woke up, baby. Hey, don't live in fear. That's all. They're trying to fear the Fed, fear the market, fud the market. It's so funny how you have Gary G and, and Jim Cramer on board with each other, too. Pretty strange. Jim Cramer's strange. I'll be honest. Like, he's a, I'm weary of that guy. Like, I wouldn't trust him as far as I could throw him, um, to be honest. Uh, and, and again, God bless him and his family and his life, whatever. But, like, I would not trust that man at all, at all. I'm coming out with a Sam Price YouTube channel. Probably going to expand to other places too as well. And what's going to be on that channel? I'm going to talk about it. We're going to talk about the truth. You know, I started with the truth here. Uh, doing the truth of finance. We're going to do the truth of health. We're going to talk about UFOs, near-death experiences, eating habits, growing organic food. We're going to break down so many different things. And we're going to have a blast doing it. Get ready for the new Sam Price channel on YouTube where I get to expand. And I'm still going to be doing what I'm doing. Don't get me wrong. You're still going to come here and get your analysis. I'm still going to be pounding the pavement at, as Crypto Lifer. But we are expanding the overall brand of me, Sam Price. Um, jump on in and find me here on, you know, I'm trying, and I, want, I, I was bringing this up the other day. I wanted to get to 500 subscribers for my first video. Um, and I can't even find my own Sam Price channel, but we'll get to that in another time. Um, uh, not to be confused with Sam Prince. All right. I'm just messing around. Um, if you guys could get the link to my Sam Price channel for me, please. Anyone out there, either in the, either, or it could it be, let's go for Sean, Sean, because Sean is probably always glued to the live. Sean, could you find my, the link to my Sam Price channel, please? So I could post it and show people kind of to subscribe and then get them going. All right. 33 mystical life path of a teacher. God bless you, bro. Keep strong and the positive energy flowing. Eight nice moves since yesterday's dip. Oh, I'm here for that. Hardest working man on YouTube. Shout out to Robert Vermouth. Never getting financial advice from Kramer ever. Guys, too weird. Okay. Yeah, he's a, he's a weird bucket, man. He does whatever the money does. Someone gives him something on the back end and he does whatever. It's pretty weird to me. So let's take a look at it. Uh, I talked last night about a possible bounce off this bottom area. To the upside so far, the 4-Hour is responding with a move from the bottom of the channel. And it's just obvious pattern trading 101, too. Just keep it simple. Down, up, down, up, down. Back up to the top of the channel. Just makes 100% sense. 27,137. We may come back down again for a bigger, bigger double bottom and a move and then a break on out of here. Some type of inverted head and shoulder there. So I'm just, you know, I'm projecting that we're likely to go to the top of this channel. I broke this down as well. And so that's kind of the three-day the daily's kind of in the middle. You don't have to really discuss it, but, you know, you want to see the daily kind of eventually curve back to the upside. We got tweezer bottoms on the daily, which suggests a big move is coming back. We got the weekly candle. We don't want to see this weekly candle close below the 200 SMA. I mean, it can. It's not the worst thing in the world if we can get back above the next week, but we can't hang out below this for too long. We want to see this weekly candle wick back up to the upside. That would be a beautiful, beautiful thing. Um, so if it's at Samuel James Price, this is the channel. If we can get more subscribers here, I want to get to 500 subscribers. Hit the link right here that I'm posting. Let's get to 500 subscribers. 
And my first video will come out when we hit 500 subscribers. I will start making content on this channel. I even could subscribe to myself. There you go. How do you not get hate? You know, you got to subscribe to yourself. So there's the new Sam Price channel. Can't wait to see you over there. Help us, baby. Help us grow. All right. It's going to be an amazing channel. We're going to talk about so many different things. Talk about entrepreneur. We're going to interview entrepreneurs and multimillionaires, how they got there, what they did. We're going to go into real estate. We're going to dive into near-death experiences. We're going to dive into UFOs, all sorts of meta information, outer-worldly inside information. And we're going to talk about the truth every single day. So if you're excited for that, I'm excited for that. I can't wait to see you on that channel. Okay, so here we go. Let's get back into brass tacks of what we do every single day here on the markets with our pulse on the markets. All right. Okay. So first thing I want to look at now, I want to deep dive into the one hour time frame and look at how the smaller time frames are responding. All right. See, the one hour is curving back to the upside here with this little curve on the stochastics. Tells me there could be a little bit of a move. MACD getting a bit of a move too, staying above the zone. And we got this nice fatty pump, right? And we broke this resistance. The end of the day, was there a bullish divergence here too? There really was of the one hour time frame. Look, swing down to swing down while this swung to the upside. A beautiful bullish divergence. I missed that on the one hour time frame. All right. And it was kind of, to me, it was an ugly pattern though. It was basically a bear flag. They broke it down. Then they swung it right back to the upside and eventually just crushed anyone that went short and just launched the shorts out of the world, out of, out of control, right? That's why it's been tough leverage trading because they've been moving the market too fast in either direction. Doesn't really give you any protection, all right? And now look what we have. I mean, clear as day, we got a diamond. I mean, you, you, you can't say we don't have a diamond forming now for Bitcoin, right? And a diamond reacts as you come in from the, from the bottom, uh, if you come in from the top, you go out of the top, right? And the diamond will look even better here on the seven-minute time frame. But to me, that is a diamond. Uh, clear as day, that's a diamond pattern. Um, so I would look for us to possibly kind of hang out down here, go up and down, and then break on out back to the upside. This is the kind of market structure that I'm looking for. We'd make a symmetrical triangle, okay, which would be a 50-50 pattern. And then our, you know, our scalp move could be back to the upside here somewhere to 26746 on the diamond. So... Um, looking for the diamond to make a move. Anybody have KuCoin login issues? I did this morning. It's funny you said that. Um, I tried to log in, but it was on my Brave browser. I had the shield up and I couldn't log in. I took the shield down. I was able to get in really easily. It's funny you said that. This morning, I did have a KuCoin login issue, but it was my shield on Brave. For whatever reason, they started, I don't know why, the Brave shield maybe got enhanced and I had to turn the Brave shield off. Like it would load my username and my password, but then when I'd click on it, it would go blank again. It was really, really weird. Uh, but I got in. I got in. No no questions asked. You know what I mean? So, uh, not a big deal. Just want to make that clear that, yes, I did have, and I never had that happen to me before. So, it was a first time for everything here on the market. So, I'm not worried. I'm not scared. I don't live in fear. I live by God's life and God's, God's energy and what God wants for me. And God really has a plan. And when God has a plan, I stick to it. And I submitted to God a long time ago. Actually, not a long time. It's like four or five years ago now. I always believed in God, but I did not submit. I've now submitted to God, and I'm telling you right now, once you submit to God, you see life in a, in a very clear way. Shout out to the 500 beautiful souls in the live. Let's get the likes up to the watches. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Let's stay positive every single day. All we have is positivity. All you have is this present moment. And if you're negative, or you're upset, if you're freaking out, if you're in fear, you ruin the, the present moment. You don't have the ability to stay in the present moment, Okay. Um, how do I get a star by my name? All you got to do is become a member here. As see, people are all members. These are all members of the channel. Jump it on in. We'll have a members-only stream coming up. I'll be. Uh, it will be my first members-only stream. So get excited for that. And let's get those likes up to the watches. If you're, if you want to be a member, if you want to be awesome, hit the like button. If you want to stay positive, hit the like button. If you want to keep me coming back every single day, staying positive, hit the like button. I, hey, Sam, I sent you an email about God and some questions. Let me know you got it. Honestly, my wife looks at my emails and tells me what to look at for the day. So I don't sit there and check emails. I do not have the time to go through emails. I just do not. I have too many people to teach, too many people to help, too many things going down. Um, I can't just, uh, my life is different. I'll be honest. Um, I don't live a normal life where I could do normal things. Um, it takes some time. Yeah. 
Um, I'm looking now and see it's already wasted my time. Not to be rude. I, I didn't get the email. Crypto Livers at Gmail. I didn't see it. Either my wife opened it up and she moved it to Attention Sam. What she does is she reads all my emails and then she moves them to Attention Sam. All right. And then what I do is once a once a once every couple of once week or sometimes it's usually three times a month. I go through all the Attention Sam emails and I try to answer as many as I can. Uh <clears throat> How, how, if you're $20 away from being liquidated at the present moment, uh, shaking my DH, shaking my damn head, Pepe, I'm a member of the 99 and subscribed. Yes, but you have to be a member here. Uh, YouTube has a membership for like $3.99 a month or something like that. They turn on another way to monetize. And so we turned that on about a week ago and that's been going well. I appreciate it. And people just represent just another way to help out the channel. Show your, so your, uh, you know, you get access to emojis, access to member stream only. And we'll break it down. Spread positivity and never hate. Amen. Shout out to the FUD expert. Funny, you're called the FUD expert. I love that, man. Uh, bro, SEC just sued Coinbase. Really? I didn't know because it wasn't my thumbnail. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I love y'all. Y'all make me laugh, man. I appreciate it. So let's break down what the SEC said. Let's talk about the PDF government document. And what they is, they're a plaintiff. They claim that they're representing the people and the people are being hurt and they have to take these dirty companies down because they're hurting the people. That's kind of what they're saying, right? Violations. By engaging in context set forth in this complaint, Coinbase has acted as an exchange, a broker, and a clearing agency without registering as an exchange, broker, or clearing agency in violation of the Section 5, 17 AB of the Exchange Act. Uh, and for purposes of Coinbase violations of the Exchange Act, was a controlled pension of Coinbase under Exchange Act Section 2A, 20A, 15 USC. In addition, through this staking program, Coinbase has offered and sold securities without registering its offers and sales in violation of, uh, you know, unless defendants are permanently restrained and enjoined, there is a reasonable likelihood they will continue to engage in these acts, practices, and transactions and courses of business set forth in this complaint and in acts, practices, transactions, and courses of business of similar type. So what I think is they either lost the SEC case, and because of this now, they're sour, and they're going after as many things as they can. Um, so, uh, you know what I mean? It's kind of strange. Um, so they're saying they're defending you too. Um, they got the statutory and legal framework. Right, you know, but this is a long document, as you can see. It is a hundred pages long. So they sat there with lawyers and went over this for days and days. All right, they got a jury demand dated New York, New York, Jan June sixth. All right, um, pretty crazy what's going on today. So, um, attorney for the plaintiff, so funny. Um, anyway. So the United States District Court of Southern, and it's always in New York. I don't know why it's in New York. New York always seems to want to be the bad guy, um, right? So they're claiming that all these utility tokens are basically securities, right? For whatever weird reason, they're claiming utility tokens are securities, which I find absolutely insane, um, right? Uh, they're trying to use a 1934 law on these small exchanges. But again, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not going to speak on it. Um, I'd have my lawyers speak on that if I ever had to. So the idea is this, it is what it is. You know, it is what it is. Uh, you know, is there a possibility that they're sue? They will win the XRP case. Maybe they know they're going to win the XRP case too. I don't know. And now they're going hard because they found out they found it. You know, we don't know. We don't know. We don't know what's going on on the end, but it, to me, it will obviously be an inside job. So I see the seven minute coming down right here and resetting for a little bit. Nice pump to the upside, right? Uh, I'm not saying this is a guaranteed dry, uh, diamond, but it, to me, it, it has the diamond representation. And diamonds, once they come in from the bottom, even if they kind of leave and come back in, as long as they stay inside, go up and down through the middle, there could be a nice move back to the upside on this diamond to 26459 That's your just first move. And then that continues all the way back to the upside. So I do see a bounce back to the top of the channel, as I talked about last night, all right? I did get fudded out even this morning. Well, I didn't get fudded out, but I wanted to trade the FUD. I felt like the FUD, I, you know, short came into the money, right? Raised my stock to break even and then just got kicked out of the trade. So it was like a, and it happened so fast. I went to work out, came back, and it all happened. Shout out to my wife, the crypto wifer. God bless you. So handsome, she says. Wow. I think she wants to tear my suit off. You're the best crypto lifer. You make every morning an incredible opportunity to learn, have fun, and grow 
my bag, man. You grow, I grow. You just have to come with the right understanding, understand the difference between what is in the Bible and religion. Amen. Amen. I like what you're saying, man. God bless you, brother. Well, like Jesus, like Santa Claus, like Santa Claus comes from like this gland inside your brain, I read. I mean, there's so many deep things and down the chimney is kind of going down your, your kundalini. Insane. But there's a lot going on in there. Jesus wrote the book of love. All right. Jesus wrote the book of love. He was teaching how to transcend. What do you think he did when he left his body? I mean, you, there's just so much other stuff going on here that people don't realize, right, um, to me. Also, what was Jesus' real name As or the earliest note that we know about? I'm going to write it down right here. I'm going to write it down just so you know I'm, like, not making it up from when someone else says it. But this is how I know you've done a lot of, a lot of religious research. What was Jesus' name? What was he known? Nope. It wasn't Yeshua. Nope. Nope. Esau, my man Zena wrote Esau. That's someone who knows what is up. Esau, man. Shout out to Zena, uh, X E N A, my man. Esau, I S A. Uh, you will find that in your deep, deep, deep research, but you got to go deeper than the way, man. It was Esau, I S A, man. God bless the Zena, man. You know your thing. Wow, that's amazing. Um, anyway, I don't want to get it. I, uh, yeah, God bless everybody here. Um, in the name of God and Jesus, man. God bless you all for being here. And Muhammad, if you were a Muslim person too as well. All of the prophets helped us attain enlightenment. All right? Moses, Samuel. My name's Samuel, right? The prophet Samuel. There was many different people in the Bible that helped us find our way. All right? That helped us find our way. Shout out to my wife in the chat. How are you in the chat? Were you at a coffee shop hanging out now? I thought you were walking. How can you walk and look at the charts at the same time? Ah, uh, you know what I mean? Anyway, love you all. Thank you for being here. I'm not going to make this a religious show, all right? But I will tell you that I do love God, and I love people of God, and I love people that believe in God. Because once you believe in God, it's so much harder for you to kick someone down. It's so much harder for you to treat someone like a piece, a piece of you know meat or garbage because you know that everyone is a beautiful piece of God's creation, and how could you hurt God's creation, right? Look at this one minute is showing signs of a pump further to the upside. If you just took the charts to the charts alone, it is an ascending triangle though, and they can break up or down. We do see a little bit of bearish divvy as this is coasting down. Well, eh, that kind of coast down a little bit too. Can the one minute get a pump to the upside? That's an interesting topic. Right now, will the one minute defy the gravity of the triangle? And could we even go higher and just make a more, you know, make a more vertical triangle? That could happen. I'd watch the shape of the one minute to see if we can get the pump to the upside. I wouldn't be surprised if we did, um, considering all the FUD going on. Are my assets safe on Coinbase now? You're fine, man. Deep breath. I mean, I, I don't want to tell anyone what, what's right or wrong, but I still got assets on Coinbase, and I'm, I'm not freaking out about it. So, you know what I mean? She's talented. Amen. Bought coin under 49. I love that. I don't know what coin you're talking about, but God bless you, man. Anything on any exchange is not safe. Hunches. I like what he said. Get yourself a hardware wallet today and keep yourself safe all right that's what you got to do have yourself a hardware wallet and keep it safe keep it safe this is a hardware wallet right here keeping myself safe all right don't get it twisted also have a treasure touch i like treasure touches the most uh but you can get whatever you want i have a link to treasure in the description if you want to get this right here you will get a discount for it on um and then you could jump on it so God bless all of you. Thank you for the love, and I appreciate it. Treasure touches, you know, it's how I store my funds and keep myself safe as well. Most of my funds are on a hardware wallet. I do keep them kind of around different exchanges, but most of my funds are on a hardware wallet just to break it down, all right? I love Treasure, man. I have two ledgers too, but I just don't use the ledger as much. I don't like the app. I don't like having to, I just don't, I don't, I don't like having to put the password into the app. Treasure, you open the app, you plug in the Treasure, you put the, you know, you put in your passcode that's on your, that you know on your treasure, yada, yada, yada. You go from there. It's pretty simple, pretty easy, does what you're supposed to do. So, um, yeah, shout out to everybody here on the live. I appreciate each and every one of you for being here. Can we look at Bookmap? We'll take a look at Bookmap. So what Bookmap did is it liquidated the shorts right there to the upside, went sideways, still holding some liquidity closer, kind of even though, it's funny, we haven't been getting as much clarity on Bookmap as we used to does say that this one minute can pump up a little more though 
into this liquidity zone, maybe even up to 26,200 before we get the move to the downside. So just one thing to think about, could we get a bigger pump here on the one minute time frame to the upside? All right, that is the question. Right now I'm watching this ascending triangle, which is exactly what it is. Remember, they're 50-50 patterns. And the length of the base of the triangle and the pole, you know, the poles, the bigger I move, but the base of the triangle. The bigger triangle that I got going on here, and I just saw this. You know, I may be one of the first people in the entire markets to show you this diamond pattern, right? Who else saw the diamond pattern anywhere else? I mean, it just happened, so. Trezor is great for all ERC-20 tokens. It holds Cardano really nicely. Um, and it's funny, I used to have to use an Ada Light wallet with Cardano and do all this, like, Ada Light and find it was all, it was a pain in the butt. But they've actually got it together now, Trezor and Cardano together. Um, I'm hearing a click in the audio. Anybody else? No, definitely not. No clicks. Shout out to everybody here on the live. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you all. Uh, music. Yeah, the music's got a little tack in it. That's all. And let me make sure there's not something else playing. Yeah, no, that's that's pretty legit. Sometimes I got like like this will play here in the background, right? Because um, this is the restream feed, but I keep the music off anyway, right? And then the live stream feed will also play in the background. This computer is a behemoth. It can handle like all sorts. It's like so much more amazing than my other computer. Uh, if you're new here, Sam, your TA make me understand about the chart. Thank you for you every day, Sam, and God bless you always. Shout out to Peter Pan. God bless you, Peter Pan. Thank you for jumping on in. Crystal clear on my phone. No eat, no pay, baby. No eat, no pay. Shout out to Jay Bella. Shout out to all my lovers of life, man. Shout out to the lifers, baby. The lifers, baby. Yeah. Everybody's back, man. Everybody's back. The lifers are back. Strong. Strong, baby. Strong. All right. And again, after a melee like that, we wait it out. We see what happens. Massive move for Bitcoin off of the bullish divergence. All right. It was on the seven minute. It was on the one hour time frame. We had big bullish divergence here on the one hour. All right. And I'll bring it out again. Who's near here? Who hasn't seen what I taught. What, what is bullish divergence? You want to get to the bottom of a channel. And then if the RSI is pointing up, right? You see that? RSI is pointing up while the price action is pointing down. You get a move to the upside. And we saw it there on the one hour. And we zoomed in. And we also saw it here on the seven minute time frame. All right. If I move this one away and how you do it is you match one point to one point, swing down one point to one point, swing up, study this, print it out, get yourself the divergence, right? I don't like using the word cheat, right? As a cheat sheet, but you know, baby pips has one. There's all sorts of different ones. I like to just go to images, not to waste my time. And this is the main sheet that I've, I'll use. I printed this out, had it on my desk for a years. I didn't understand regular or bullish. Didn't understand them. I could find hidden very well, and that was it for a long time. So even I struggled with divergences for about two to three years. Uh, so it didn't happen. It wasn't like this overnight. All right. I enjoyed yesterday and got some nice buy-ins. Amen. Um, John 24, Jesus said, unless you believe that I am, you will surely die in your sins. The sounds very important matter. So who is I am. I am who I am. Yahweh, right? And that's kind of when Moses went up to the hill and he said, the burning bush said, I am what I am. Tell them I am who I am, right? That was Yahweh. Uh, interesting, right? I'm working over here. Shout out to Katie Casey. I love you, brother. He knows what's up, man. Now, you know, it's funny. That'll always make me laugh, man. Um, I love my dad, man. And, you know, he's still with me. He didn't go anywhere. I realize he's still with me every single day god bless you jimmy god bless you dad i love you more than you would ever know you mean the world to me and uh i thank you for all the years that you spent with me i thank you for all the time you know my dad took me to tennis courts when i was a little kid not too many times but enough times and he, he brought like this rope because he said why would we have to go and get the thing every time so we'd go to these open tennis courts where they didn't have the they hadn't put the uh you know the the net in yet and he would just get a green rope and you'd hit it over the rope. That way, if you didn't hit over the rope, it still went to the other side. No one had to go get the ball. Pretty good idea. He played basketball with me, I remember. When, and he had me when he was 36. So I'm like 12 or 14 or maybe, you know, man, probably 10 or 11. And so he's sitting, he's like 47 years old. And he's playing basketball with me. 
Um, you know, he threw the football with me. Brought me out in a cold day, I remember. And he would throw the football so hard, it would hit my chest and hurt. I don't think he realized it or he just didn't realize how strong he was. And I wouldn't say anything. But uh, my dad would hit me with that ball, man. And I'd be like, man. And I would catch it, though. I would catch it with all my might. Uh, my dad brought me skiing as a kid. Uh, you know, and he never even had any any lifestyle like that. He grew up completely different. Never, No one took him skiing. Uh, my dad bought a boat and had us going out in a boat when I was a kid. Uh, my dad bought me my first sailboat when I was like 12 years old that was used for this guy's backyard. And I sailed it all over the place and took my parents out. Um, my dad did. My dad rode his bicycle with me. Um, you know, my dad, put, I was on the back of his Harley. He picked me up on the back of his Harley and take me home from school. Um, I got thousands of memories with my father. So, um, may God bless his soul. Cardano is easy to transfer to Ledger too. Cardano is very easy too. Yeah. No, Ledger actually has more access to more coins in my humble opinion. You can put more on your Ledger, all right, than you can on your Trezor in my humble opinion, all right? Yo, just quit UPS finally, a full-time trader, entrepreneur. Shout out to Jamal Antonio, man. I can't believe you did that. Yo, shout out to Jamal, man. Jamal, we love you, brother. I can't believe that. Shout out to Jamal, man. Big, 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 big time. And God bless you, man. You're a homeowner. You got yourself into position. God bless you, man. Jamal from St. Pete. Um, we met in Florida. He was a lifer. Helped me out. Uh, love you, brother. RIP James Price and my and my James Price. RIP to your James Price and my James Price. I interesting. We both had a James Price in our lives. That's interesting. Shout out to Jamal Antonio. We love you, Jamal. Hope the dogs are well. Hope the girls are well. Hope everything's going well with you and yours in your life. May God bless you for everything you're going through, man, and uh, for pushing through. Not everything you're going through, but for pushing through and making it happen. You're making it happen, man. And you're not letting someone tell you what to do with your life. You're taking your life by storm. May God bless you, brother. Shout out to the Crypto Crusader. Amen, brother. May God bless his soul. God bless everybody here in the live. Let's get the, let's get the, yo, we got 577 people. We got 290 likes. Remember when I used to have two people on this live stream, three people on this live stream, then 10, then 15, then 20, then 30, then 100. Then we barely would get to 200. Then we could barely get to 300. Then we could barely get to 400. Then we got to 1,000, 800. This stream has been through so many ups and downs, but you people have got me to the next level. It's you, each and every one of you that have done it. So you got to keep hitting that like button. You got to keep commenting. You got to keep it pushing. You got to keep on going for me. I'm going to keep going for you, baby. I'm going to keep going for you. Let's go. I'm losing my voice on this live lately. God bless you all more than you would ever know. All right. I can't contain the energy. It just can't be contained. If I could contain it, I would, but I can't. I'm just not that type of person. I want to push forward every single day of my life. All right. I want to push forward every single day of my life, and that's it. Ah, share the stream, baby. Let people know. Share the stream. So Coinbase gets sued. We could see it coming. They actually made a movement against uh, the SEC saying that they can't just do whatever they want. Also, the sad thing is, was Gary G ever voted into office? I don't believe so, right? He was appointed. The problem with this, like, you know, if you look at my interview with Vivek Sawami, and team, one more thing. I want to point out, I love y'all. You're the best. My team is amazing. But a few things that we got to tweak. When I interview a famous person that is well known, you got to put the person's name in the video title, right? Think about it. You got to start. Let's be logical about these ideas, right? So I interviewed Vivek Sw Swami, but his name's not even in here. It's a society's falling. Can this man save us all? That's not going to get us the hits, you know? That's just not going to get us the hits. What you got to write is like Vivek Ramaswamy, let's see if I can do this name. I think I did it right. Uh, let's take a look, though. I'm pretty sure I'm off. We'll get the right name. Ramaswamy. I did it right, dude. Ramaswamy. Ramaswamy. Vivek Ramaswamy. And, um... <clears throat> I love that we have these new different candidates out here recently. But Vivek Ramaswamy, all right? Um, uh, 
And I told him I wanted to run for president, too. To, to talk to someone who's running for president and say, you're going to run for president, it was pretty interesting, right? But I'm telling you, man, I've said things that I thought were just a dream, and they became reality, right? Vivek Ramaswamy, exclusive interview in Miami. And this, I mean, I, and again, it may not change now, but when I interview someone that known, you got to put their name first things first in, in there. We got to think logically, like, and, and I'm not trying to be rude, but, like, think about it, like, you know what I mean? Um, so, just one thing I got to discuss, and this was an amazing interview. Just a few quick totes. I didn't get, like, an hour with him or anything. It was about five minutes, but, um, you know, we talked some cool things. We saw eye to eye. I was able to meet him in person. It was pretty awesome, right? It was pretty awesome. And so, uh, yeah, uh, definitely check out that interview by Vivek Raswami uh, with, with Vivek. Ramaswamy um, exclusive interview and I probably didn't spell that right I did exclusive interview in Miami but yeah everyone my team if we if we interview someone that big uh, like if it's Michael Saylor and you write can this man save crypto you know what I mean you got to put Michael Saylor in the title right uh, you know it's funny I was just with a friend too and he looked at that and he was like he pointed it out too he was like why would you I said I know man I know All right so and you and I don't think we ever even tweeted this out there's just so much to tweet out. Uh, and then you can hit him up on, on Twitter. Right? And now, like, you know what I mean? You, you gotta, we gotta connect the dots here all the time. We work so hard. We just need to tweak a few things to get even more traction. All right? To even more traction. Like the fact that I interviewed a presidential candidate, that's that's a big deal. You know what I mean? That I traveled all the way to Miami and also, I changed my flight for that. Um, changed my flight, added a day because I thought that he was on Saturday afternoon. I got access to the press room, the whole thing, and I waited for an hour sitting there just waiting for Vivek Ramaswamy. Um, so. Shout out to Wesley Sharples. It could happen, man. I feel like as soon as the Democrats and the Republicans come out with their list of endorsed candidates, 90% of us in this country should exclude them from voting consideration. An immediate find an outside candidate that supports your ideals and beliefs, whether it's Vivek or somebody else. I always list my athletes when I sit down with them. SEO, amen. The Bombo, man. Exactly. You're the man, Sam. Inspired by your grind daily. Shout out to Life or Adam in the house. Shout out to everybody here on the game. I appreciate you all for being here and breaking it down with me every single day. So this looks like it's going to make a move to the upside. It's getting so tight in the zone, and now we're pushing to the upside. All right? And now we're pushing to the upside. Do I make a live stream? Do I make a live stream play on this tiny move? Seems like every time I see something move, they switch it the other way. But this is starting to consolidate pretty nicely. What time frame are we on here? What time frame are we on right here? On the five-minute time frame, that looks like a flag that's going to break to the upside, in my humble opinion. Something like this. You know, and that one minute definitely wants to rumble. We get a nice big move out of this to the upside. And this is just, you could just, sometimes I've looked at the indicators and I've just pattern traded. And the pattern trades have played out almost better than the indicators. Uh, I go back and forth, right? There's a, there's a battle and a struggle there. But it's all about proper risk management, right? So there's a possible 2% gain, all right? So if we use 10x leverage, we can get 20%. Can we make 100 bucks out of $500 is the question. How much do we have to risk? We want to make sure it's a 3 to 1 risk or ratio or at least a 262, something like that, all right? So we either lose, right, or we win. And that's the key here. Uh, and so what I'm looking at is a possible move to the upside. So if we swing this up to, what, 500 leverage, 500 bucks. And I like the new confirm button because I want to see my liquidation point before I get into the trade. So I went up into this cog wheel and added confirm position. Super awesome that you helped me do that the other day. So our target is going to be 26,600. All right, 26,600. And I'll do it like 598. You never want to be exactly on a more 597, something like that. And that's a 21% gain on 500 bucks, right? Our stop loss is going to have to be below the zone here at about 25 seven nine nine or seven nine seven we'll say right so we're going to risk two percent to gain 21 percent 
Um, doesn't make sense. Yeah, 25.79. And 26,034. And we can open the trade. It's going to ask us to confirm the liquidation level. It's going to be 22,800, right? So highly likelihood that we don't get liquidated. And we'll see if the position opened. It did not yet. Um, the, we're trying to get in at 26.34. It already went to 26.44. Starting to raise a little high on our move here. All right. And now oh, it would have been filled, actually, if I had let it let it go. Right then it would have been filled. And even this alone, a lot of beginners just, just starting out trading gets them nervous. Like, this is the beginning of trading, right? And then we open that trade there. All right. Still didn't get it at 2034. Come on. And just wait your turn for the limit order. It's going to click. Come on. Come on. Limit in, baby. Limit in. Limit in. There we go. We got limited in. Okay. So now we watch the we watch price action. All right. And we see this is about to curve back to the upside. We know the one minute wants to pump. So, and we watch this. And we trade a flag as a flag is traded. And you either get stopped out or you make the money. You know, it is what it is. Let the trade sit. We'll come back to that in a second. And we'll break it down for you. Uh, we also see some short liquidations right now. And a lot of liquidity further to the upside. Uh, suggesting that we could pump easily to that target that I'm going for. All right. So, we'll see. We will see. Only time will tell. But I'm identifying lack of bearish momentum here. And they're flooding a lot of the market on the on the altcoins, which what does that do? That pushes Bitcoin to the upside. You see what I'm saying? Um, dump them out quick, short 100x. That's funny, right? 100, hurry and short me. And what was my leverage on that? 8x long on the leverage. Okay, not a lot of leverage. Already down $5, 1%. Yikes, right? Hurting me. And we'll see what goes on. All right. Is sideways price action? Do we see a bearish divergence? We kind of don't. They're kind of both the same way right now, suggesting that the one minute could come back up to the upside and continue. It's consolidating very, very tightly in the zone. That means a, a move is coming. A move up or down is coming. When you get that tight inside of a range, a move is coming. So we're either breaking up or breaking down in the next, I don't know, 10, 20 minutes at the very most, probably less than that. All right, and I'm open-minded. I could easily get stopped out. Anything is possible. It is what it is. Can you take a look at CFX? Matic is getting to a good DCA price. Amen. How do I turn uh, on the confirm on MEXC? Super awesome, honestly. And it's super, and this is MEXC. This is where I'm trading. MEX Global, man. And I like MEX Global because they have zero spot maker and taker fees. Zero spot maker and taker fees really changes the game. All right? And, uh... That's the key here, too. So, Maxi, and also, they just hook it up, man. They're awesome. They're awesome. Did it again. We had a little competition recently, too, where five lifers were able to gain 500 USDT in bonus. That's awesome. Uh, I appreciate that. It took us about, I think, 10-day little, it was a little awesome competition to see who could trade the best. And whoever traded the best was able to get that pay, baby. Get that pay. Uh, we're down now $2, a half a percent. We'll see what happens. All right. I want to start putting big money in these trades, right? I'm able to get about 3% on every trade a lot of times. We'll see what happens on the next few trades, and we'll continue to chip away. All right. Top right corner. So here, he said, go to the top right corner, see the cogwheel, and just flick on order confirmation window. That way, before you trade, it asks you to confirm. Some people don't want it because they want that trade fast and furiously. But I feel like the most, the, the better, the more time you put in between you and your trade, the better, right? Nothing should ever be rushed in life. Nothing in life should be rushed, right? That's an ascending triangle. They are 50-50 patterns. So it's 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 a little... Uh, and look, now you can drop and drag these. You can just drag this down or drag this up. Really nice, right? You could drag your stop up to break even. You could do kind of whatever you want pretty easily. So... Bearish div on the 7-minute. I hope it's going to 26,500. And he says bearish divvy on the 7-minute time frame. I don't see that, honestly. That's swinging up. Well, that's swinging. Yeah, I, I don't see bearish divergence yet. I don't, to be honest. It does look like we're about to dump on the seven minute, though. I, I'll give you that. And we are at the top of the diamond with a bunch of wicks. Doesn't look good on the seven, I'll be honest. Looks pretty bearish on the seven. But five minute could complete and the one and the one minute could complete. So I'm just trying to trade these smaller time frames for a possible short squeeze. 
We will see what happens. Starting to get hammered right now already, all right, to the downside. And I'm like a really good swing trader, an amazing investor. I, again, I'm not a financial advisor. Another guy said you should be taking it as a financial advice. But as I started, you know, leverage trading, I've never leverage traded. I always thought it was for the birds and I never wanted to do it. I thought it was a waste of time, to be dead honest. Sitting, staring at the screen all day, watching your emotions go up and down. I used to basically tell everyone never to touch leverage trading and just stay away from it. Uh, but now I saw too many people were doing it. No matter what I said in my trading group, they just kept doing it, kept doing it, kept doing it. So now I just want to show you, use less than 1% of your portfolio. Always use a stop loss and do what you can, right? Uh, there you go. There's the dumpage starting to happen. And sometimes I'll cut it off too. If the trade doesn't go too well, I'll just cut off an $8 loss and move on. I'll flash close it and move on from there, right? Um, I don't like to lose money if I don't have to, all right? It's another reason once you've made like i've made dang a lot of money trading why would i why would i force myself to lever trade if i don't need to okay so uh, those extra two to three seconds of review can save you from making the wrong move sometimes you accidentally skip or add a zero somewhere and get immediately liquidated yeah i've even went to open up a short and hit the long button accidentally right and that would have showed me hey hey you're, you're you're trying to trade long i'm like no i'm not trying to trade long I'm trying to short, you know, and that happened to me a couple times because I'm used to longing. And then I went to open up a short, I hit the wrong button. It can happen. So that's why I do like, I do like that. No, shout out to Life of Friend. I love Life of Friend. And I learned from everybody, you know, how do you turn off Brave Security? You come up here and you flip this little button on. There's a shield up or down. You just flip that off. And you should be able to get into, you should be able to get into uh, your KuCoin account after that. Yeah. Lever trading is just like trading on Forex. Amen. How do you turn? Okay. Is there a link to your other channel? Yes, there is. Right here. Jump on it today. I'd greatly appreciate it. All right. Samuel James Price at Samuel James Price, which I own on Twitter now on YouTube, which I'm not, a bunch of people try to, you know, I'm happy we got it first. All right. Got our handle there. Wow. We're getting hammered now. As I can see, the liquidity is dragging us further to the downside. Look at that. They're trying to attempt to kind of sh get these long stopped out immediately. And honestly, this whole week has been feeling like a Monday. Every single time. Every single time. This whole week is feeling like a Monday. And I will be honest, I'm a beginner leverage trader. I've been leverage trading for maybe two, three months. And my whole life, I've never did it. I stayed away from it. Think about it. If, if, a lot of people want to know my story. You know, I got into... Uh, you know, trading gold and silver spot swing. I, I use leverage. I use three three x leverage. Three, three out three out on three s tokens where you can't get liquidated. I did that for a long time. ETFs trading gold and silver mainly gold. Then I put some money that I had made into a silver stock that turned into from twenty five hundred into nine grand. Then I put that into Canopy Grow Corp and waited two years and it turned into well way more money. And then I found Bitcoin. So I am I, I was a speculative investor that already made eighty thousand dollars before I even knew how to really actually day trade and swing trade. So I already did what most people try to do trading by just speculating investing, like looking at the just this looking at multiple investments, picking the right one and holding it for one to two years. I got really good at that. I did it with Bitcoin. I did it with Cardano and I've made a boatloads of money doing that. That's kind of my forte. So I've made a lot of money macro speculating. All right. And that's why I, I kind of laugh sometimes. I, I'd be rude, but I kind of laugh at lever traders a little bit because I'm like, I outpaced you. Just sitting on my, you know, I outpaced you sitting outside looking at the birds, watching my investments grow. Um, and I, and I, and, and so I battle a lot of people try to force me into leverage trading. You should do it. It'd be awesome, you know, to get it done. And I'm always like, but I made hundreds of thousands of dollars at this point and I never had to touch leverage. So I kind of laugh at it. You know what I mean? It, it's like, it's kind of like a guy that went out, caught a bunch of fish, and then this guy's got these little things. And he's like, dude, I have more fish than you, though. Like, I also researched billionaires, and I never saw a billionaire talk about how they leverage trade themselves the billions of dollars, you know? And it takes a lot of your time away. And while you're sitting there watching a screen like this, you could be researching the next coin. You could be finding out a great new investment. So to me, I don't know. I, I'm still kind of beside my... I'm still kind of up and down on leverage trading. You know what I mean? I kind of think it's for the birds. And I tend to not, not be that great at it. I have to be dead honest. I'm not amazing at leverage trading. I'll be honest, 100% honest. Um, like right now, I'm losing a trade right now in front of you. Like, like I'm losing 17 bucks. Like, I didn't need to do that. I could have just bought Bitcoin with that money and held it for four years. You know what I mean? Um, 
But billionaires have used leverage. They use maybe very, I, I, I don't know. I, I, go research all the billionaires in the world. How many of them have used leverage? Be honest. How many, dude? Dude, maybe the hedge funds they worked with use leverage. But the billionaire himself? I don't know, man. You know what I mean? You got to take your leverage gains and put them in alts. I mean, that, that'd be a smart idea. And then you're doing both, right? You're swinging and you're swapping and you're, you're doing your thing, right? Now we're down 3%, though. I don't like being down at all. I don't like losing money. Look at the 15-minute. You long the top. No, I know I long the top on the 15 and the 7. But it doesn't mean the smaller time frames can't make a gain. But now I do see a bearish divergence now. Now there is a bearish divergence because that's up and that's down, right? And we are, we are at the top. But watch, you switch long. You'll switch short now, right? Like, I'll switch short. Yeah, 15 minute wants to dump back down. And that's kind of, you know, also see the wicks to the downside. But then you'll switch short and you watch the price pump up to the 200 SMA. When you purchase real estate, you're basically using leverage. Yeah, you're using bank leverage, but it's a little different. I mean, I find that completely different. Using, putting a little bit of money up to get some more money from someone else, to me... It's not the same as trading like 50x leverage. You know what I mean? Wait, do we get stars now? You do. If you join the membership, you do. You do. You do. All right. I'm still going to wait for this one minute to reset and come back up. And then I'm going to probably exit the trade and hopefully break even. And maybe I will switch short. You got to be able to switch bias too, right? That's the hardest part of it. To like realize that you may be wrong and switch the bias. They came down and they just liquidated a bunch of longs right there, right? Whoever was just too high leveraged just got absolutely smashed. Also, after when when they got people on edge like this, they got the markets kind of running. Every day becomes like a false move Monday. It's a lot of ups and downs to the market, right? The exception doesn't make the rule. Amen. Most, most, I mean, I see what you're saying. They use leverage, but they... My whole point is billionaires didn't sit trading leverage on a, on, a, on, a, on a little screen. You know what I mean? They looked at, like, they bought real estate. Like, they invested in a property. Uh, they made some type of uh, new, innovative uh, technology. You know, like, that's how most billionaires were made. All right? You can research all the billionaires in the world and put together a kind of a little story and see what kind of makes them tick and kind of say, well, I get it, right? That is a little bit of bearish divergence now on the 7 even. That swings up while that swings down, right? We did get the drop. Could be a shoulder head and a right shoulder there too that drops us to the downside. And I'll switch short if I have to. When the markets are on fire, all season leverage is the way to go. Yeah. We get this just more of a poor man's leverage. Amen. Long was the AM play. We short now. Derek for reals. So it's going to 26.5 anytime soon? I don't know. You're running into 26.1 resistance too. Play the zones. I don't really see heavy resistance yet. Yeah, what do I see now too? Look, I see an Adam and Eve double top. It's likely to break down. See that? Seven minute definitely wants to come down. Seven minutes about to collapse. Look at that. So I'll switch short. Watch. I'll switch short on the market. Watch this. I'll flash close. All right. $14 loss. All right. And I'll switch short on the market on the seven. Even the five minute. Yeah, It's, it's weird though. The five minute is resetting nicely. This is just. How is the five and the seven minute opposite? That's very rare. You never see that. But it could press the five minute down further. It's interesting. Trading is not easy. They said 90% of you fail at trading. When you deep dive into trading, you will find that a bunch of things about indicators or price action, you'll find a lot about psychology. Amen. Trading is psychology all day long. It's more about your mind than anything else. Stick into your original plan too, right? Why not just hit the reversal button? How about no, Scotty, don't. Austin Powers. Flopping and groping. SpongeBob is wrecked. It's so funny. Good to great. The study of the common tra traits of the best CEOs. Great book. Highly recommended. 
Thank you so much, man. Good to great. I love that. Let me take that down. As a book I need to write. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'll, I'll write a book great to good. Charlie Munger was around when they traded glass beads. And by an Irish man, too. Jim Collins. Fellow Irish brother in the house, right? Five minutes suggest a little bit of bounce could come here. We did hit the topping out, though. And the seven minute does want to break us down a little bit. 15 minute also trying attempting to roll over. Let's see how far the 15 minute is from the 21 day moving average. And see if we can trade the 15 minute back to the 21. 21 is pretty far away. And by my rule, too, this is the top of the diamond. The diamond should want to come back to the downside, right? In all honesty. AVAX wasn't listed in the groups. Funny. You can reverse positions on futures. Really? What do you mean by that? See, I don't even know that. How do you reverse position? You know? So look, now I'll go short, okay? I'll go short. And we'll flip it. See, I don't see where a good stop loss could be, though. You could easily just get stopped out on a spike. That's the issue here. I don't feel like a good... I don't see a good resistant... I don't see a good area for a stop loss, personally. And I'm kind of lost on where my next area of price action would take me. Without... Let me look at... Let me look at my, my chart. It's like I would take profit at this next area, like somewhere right here at about 25.8, right? It would make sense. And I'd look for a stop loss. I don't really know where the stop loss could be. We could easily pump up to that 200 SMA too. I wouldn't be surprised if we did. Stop has to be like above 26,100, right? The first resistance there. So stop loss at like 26,150, all right? Take profit's going to be down at like 20, 25,738. And remember, you got to switch it if you're going to do short. So, uh, so here we want we want to take it twenty five seven eight seven as our take profit, and our stop's going to be twenty six one fifteen. We're going to risk two point four to gain seven point five nine. It's not that bad, right? And then we're going to open short, all right? And you have to hit short to do this because otherwise it doesn't get it. 25787 Use the same 500 bucks. Why is it not showing me? Oh, there it is. It moved it down. So you want to see your margin, which is how much you're using, then how much they give you. And then another thing I notice is the short might be at a different level than you're at. So I'll be at like a, a 9x leverage. All right. Now I would have been in the money already. I try to go lower than price action if I can. But you want to you want to get it in the spot if you can. And I'll open short, right? So I'll switch my bias. Two five, there we go. We got clipped in, and we're limit ordering here too. See that we're limit ordering, not market ordering. So we're not paying any fees for these. These are no fee trades. All right, and the stochastic should come back down. We should get the dump back on the bigger time frame. So we will see. I switch short. Let's see what happens. Mexi allows you to change the leverage in the trade too. It's funny when you do that though. Like that's interesting. All right. So the bigger time frames do show that we could get a pullback down to the downside. That's what I've been looking at. Let's get rid of this outside now because it's over with. So I hope you taught so I hope I taught you something about divergences. Um, how to flip your bias, right? If things don't go your way or they don't look like it's going to happen, try to scalp the smaller time frame, but it is the smaller time frame. And I see an Adam and Eve double top here. I have to be honest. Like there's your Adam, right? And there's your Eve. Cool thing about the curve pattern, if you go left, it curves right. If you, it curves over, but if you go left, it curves down. See that? A lot of people don't know that. I remember when I first learned that, it was pretty cool. That's got some Adam and Eve vibes to me. I'll tell you that right now. And it's basically double topping. 
with some bearish div- divvy. Um, yep. We could come back one more time and make like an inverted cup and handle too. Maybe we could kind of spike up here and then the bigger move comes down. Now I'm down $2 the other way though. Isn't that funny? It's like the battle. Anyway, let's get back into brass tacks as I teach myself how to leverage trade in front of everyone here on the live. Let's take a look at the DXY and see how it's holding up against the markets and break it down. So the DXY right now on the one minute, look, shoulder head and a shoulder, nasty, right? To the downside. Let's get out of the smaller time frame and let's look at our daily. This song's funny. It reminds me of like Mr. Rogers or something. This one makes me feel. So what I've been like just a little bit, you know, weary of is the Adam and Eve double bottom on the dollar. That's clear as day in Adam and Eve double bottom. All right. But we made a rising wedge there in the channel. And we also top of the channel, bottom, top of the channel. We're likely to head here somewhere to the bottom of the channel, in my humble opinion. I wouldn't be surprised if we hit the bottom of the channel. So looking for a MACD cross back down. Looking for the RSI to show us some bearish divvy. And we want to see it come back down. However, the daily did reset. and didn't lose a lot. All right. So whatever they're doing with the dollar, uh, you know, and with TGA getting filled up, right and money coming out of basically risk assets for the for the federal reserve and like our, you know our government it could spell a little prop up in the dollar i also keep saying why won't the dollar come up and touch the 200 sma when we get tight moving averages a lot of times that's what happens right we're at the top of this channel i wouldn't be surprised if we, for, we got further down but the dollar saying no way and we do have this double bottom on the dollar and it's an adam and eve double bottom and a lot of times adam and eve double bottoms make a big move to the upside so that has me wondering either Bitcoin pumps with the dollar. Again, it, it still has to break above these two resistance points. And mainly this one here at about 105.60, right? Is that a cup and handle on the DXY? It kind of was, but it's more of an Adam and Eve double bottom. I, I said it like five times, but I don't know if you're listening. You know, it could make a, a handle too soon though, right? Something like that. You have your coffee smoking out the top. Blessed day, everyone. Lost my current employment due to budget cuts. Decided after three years of being an on and off trader to finally uh, dedicate and commit to being a lifer. Thanks for your consistency, Sammy. Shout out to Dollar Dollar Crypto, man. God bless you, brother. You can graduate as Sammy, as Sammy Sniper, the crypto lifer. One day, baby, one day. Um, thank you for saying that, man. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, I looked at Cotton Candy. I learned a little bit about, I learned from him. If you do leverage, you never switch. Do your trade, you lose or you win. If you swing, you will lose always. Interesting. Every time, right? Yeah, now we're back up the other way, right? It's just a, it's a, it's, what a game. What a game, man. I find it frustrating for my personality type too. I just don't, um, it's like, it's like, I don't know, man. It, it, it gets me going. You know, I tend to waste more time when I leverage trade and I have so many other things to do with my life, you know, so I don't know. Pick a side and ride. Plus day, everyone lost my current employment. Yep. I've been down to 10K in a day and kept trading until I got a positive trade and ended up making 2K profits. Uh, you can't be bullish or bearish. I switch being long and short all day long. Yeah, so he like he was down 10k, then he fought it out, then he ended up making 2,000. He got the 10k back, is what he's saying, and the 2k back. Uh, do I get to keep your course download? Yeah, just a couple of phones around to break, right? Just keep a couple of phones around to break. That's funny. Seven minute looking like a flag and RSI resets. On the dollar index? I don't know what you're talking about. I don't like that daily on the dollar, man. I would draw a flag here, and if the daily can stay inside a flag, then it can cup and handle its way out of this. I can spell some trouble for Bitcoin. Not amazing, right? The three-day, though, which is very overbought, while the Bitcoin three-day is very over uh, oversold, tells us that we're likely to come back down to the bottom of the channel. Probably even tussle with the 200 SMA right here, right? 
So the bigger time frame says we, and what we want to do is break this low. Once we break this low, we can negate this Adam and Eve double bottom, right? That's what we want. We don't want that. We really don't. So I would like to see the three day kick into charge mode, start to come on down and start to dump this dollar back to this area. It'll break a hundred. And if it breaks a hundred, that's so psychological for the dollar. So that's what I'm looking at. I mean, I'm watching this three day very, very closely. That's the time frame to me that has the most weight. Sam, everything you say about leverage trading is so helpful for me as a beginner. I want you to know your thoughts on it are spot on. And no matter what anybody says, super helpful to beginners. If you're not good at spot trading, then you'll fail at trading perps. It's that simple. Road, dog, crypto. But to me, spot trading is completely different. You know, and I always tell everyone you should spot trade for years before you end up leverage trading. You know, but to me, like a swing trade on the four hour is so much simpler on the one hour than trading leverage. You just set it and you forget it and you let it go. Look at that shoulder head and a shoulder there on the four hour for the DXY. So the DXY might get a pump up. Personally, it has a lot to do with how we trade. Some styles work well with certain characteristics, hence why some scalp while others swing. Well, swing well, you the man. Shout out to John Thomas. Thank you so much, brother. It all depends on kind of what you're looking for, right? It really does, you know? However, I mean, we just stick to this 15 minute. It's likely to come to the downside. One hour time frame too. Like I like the one hour on the 15. Then I use the seven to enter a trade usually in my humble opinion. But let's take a look at ES1, which is the S&P futures, which have been pretty bullish. And look at that. We broke out of this to the upside, which is nice. And now we're making a little flag here on the four hour time frame. And this is bullish. And I'll tell you why we're getting bullish on the S&P. Because they're about to flip bias on that on the uh, on the Fed. Right, 70% chance that the Fed flips the other way around. That's a big deal. All right, that's a big deal. So uh, we don't want to see, you know, the the Fed, I, because Bitcoin to 12 to 40k in the next three months when the recession will be called. Who knows, man? I keep it open minded. I don't make calls like that. I don't think it's smart to make calls like that. You know, but you could do it because you don't have a channel and you'll never have to kind of pay homage to that call. You can say whatever you want, and it is what it is, right? But if you were actually on YouTube and you had a public following, you can't just say whatever you want. There's got to be some technical analysis behind it and some reasoning. You can't just be like, yeah, 10K, and then we're going to have the recession call. You know what I mean? Thoughts on Baby Adam. No thoughts on Baby Adam at all. Shout out to Billy Bob 369 though. God bless you, brother. Thank you for being here. I see you all around the internet. You must spend 10 hours a day on live streams because I see your name on almost every single live stream in the game. Uh, are you looking at 25,350 as the retest of the neckline of a giant inverse head and shoulder? Super Chats, AVAX, Gabrielle Chateau, that's awesome for the people. Then everyone can get some. I'm looking for some something close, actually. Pedro Ramos. I don't know what he means by that. If you're not, uh, is Web3 the future? Of course it is. Crypto Beehive. Shout out to being on. Shout out to Crypto Beehive. Never heard of Crypto Beehive. New on the channel. Thank you so much for jumping on in. I appreciate you. All right. I appreciate you. Now we're going flat, man. Today's a weird day too to trade. Sometimes you just don't get the market move that you want. It just sits there and sits there and sits there. We'll just patiently wait. We'll patiently wait. Well, now you have to wait for that seven minute to reset and not catch you out. We still feeling good on VRA. Live for which time frame minimum would you say divergences are most reliable and accurate? Most you see that's a that's a question that someone that just hasn't studied divergences. You just got to spend more time. You got to spend more time on them. I mean the biggest the bigger the time frame the better in my humble opinion. The biggest time frames hold the whole, hold the most weight, you know? But but divergence will play out on each time frame as it's needed. And remember you need your support and resistance at all times. Support and resistance is key because it's all about support and resistance. All right? Okay, the next time you ES1 looks like it's about to pop too, which is a nice move for ES1. That's what we want to see too. Look at that four minute trade for ES1. ES1 futures look beautiful for the day and into Thursday and Friday. All right. 
Yeah, 15 minute normally gives you 5% swings. So I, I like what he's saying, Nick. Nick Zulu, that's a good point. All work until they don't. Yeah. Top G, love you, brother. Thank you for everything you do for the public. Please talk over XTP, Sam. Thanks, brother. Please talk over XTP. I don't know about it, man. God bless you, though. I appreciate that. I know nothing about XTP. I really don't. 11.39. Dude, see, every time I leverage trade, the show disappears, too. I forget about the show. I got a job to do. And look, now we're going the other way. But I'll just stick to it. Either I get stopped out or I don't. I'll leave that trade alone. You know what I mean? Either I get stopped out or I don't get stopped out. It is what it is. It is what it is. And I'm trading here on Maxi. Good maker and taker fees. Zero percent spot maker and taker. Even futures. As long as you use a limit order, you're just paying zero fees. I just can't believe that. You know what I mean? Love is the strongest frequency. Amen. USA listing soon. XTAP Finance. It's going to be massive. USA listing soon. Thank you. I appreciate that. Potter's podcast. We'll take a look at it. I'll deep dive it before I talk about it. I still contend we are in the range of 25, 29 with dips and spikes to 23 or 31 on a move for the next two months. Uh, but just a guess, anything can happen. Shout out to Golden God. God bless you, brother. I look, uh, I like the look of XTP too. Seems undervalued. Interesting. What does Bookmap show? Bookmap shows that we're going to go lower. There's this fat order down here that we're about to get dragged into. It does suggest, but we already kind of touched it one time, but they're keeping it strong. And then we got this bigger order kind of hanging out below. So Bookmap, to me, is showing signs of life into the downside, but it might even tip up a little bit more first, too. There's more liquidity down here than there is up here. See, it's getting thin up there. Day off today. It's my weekend. Gina, since you're off today, you want to come over and hang out. John Thomas. This guy's ridiculous. Okay, so we looked at Bitcoin. We looked at, let's look at the total market cap and all of cryptocurrency too. That's something that I'm interested in. So I've just been waiting for this bounce off this bottom trend line for a long time. We start to got it, get it, and then but we're still kind of holding the trend line. Let's get rid of the moving averages for a second. It's messy. I get it. We'll make it look nice and neat for you. So you can see price action. We'll get rid of all these insane lines that are unneeded. We'll make new ones. We got dumped out of that flag. So we double topped in a way. It was kind of an Adam and Eve double bottom in some circumstances. We lost this level, which was oh so important, right? And so that's going to be our next resistance is $1.08 trillion. But we're still holding above a trillion. The market cap's still holding above a trillion. You have a low, you have a high, you have a higher low. That's a bullish sign in my public opinion. The four hour wants to make a bounce too as well. The daily wants to bounce and the three day wants to bounce. All the bigger time frames tell you a big move is coming to the upside. So while they FUD the FUD the FUD the FUD, it's all FUD today. Constant FUD, right? Um, and remember, these are all fines. Whenever you just... This exchange stuff is all a fine. None of this is criminal. I just want to make it really clear. These are just fines. Like Coinbase will pay a fine and move on, but they'll probably fight it first before they pay a fine. Coinbase has a lot of money. Brian Armstrong bought a $133 million home, right? He doesn't care. He's not afraid of the SEC. He doesn't care. You know what I mean? And that's what these people don't realize, that crypto will continue to grow, and they'll go to, they'll go to other places. Wow, look at the pump for Bitcoin now. And I was correct on my original idea. Look at that. Now back the other way. This is how it feels to leverage trade, right? You're on one, then you're on the next, and it's just like, it's swinging your emotions all around. You have to just not care about the money and more care about positioning, right? And that's the seven minute coming back to the upside. Like, if we look at the seven minute on a smaller time frame... I find it difficult because it vexes me. Like, it, it gets me vexed. That's why I like swing trading. It's nice and easy, man. Not easy. Nothing's easy, but, you know, you just take it the way it's supposed to be taken. It's so like the four-hour wants to pump. 
So like you're going against the four hour while you're shorting the market on the on the on the one hour and the fifteen, right? And now I mean that's a flag to me too. Like that's a little flag. We can stay sideways and come back and touch the twenty-one day moving average. Then this can make a move to the upside. You see, one hour is a little spent. I get it. And look, the seven minutes getting oversold with a pump. And now we're back to watching this little flag on the seven that really actually wants to do some damage. And not only do I not trade leverage, but I don't trade smaller time frames. Like I'm not sitting on the one minute scalping. Just not my thing. Every person I do that, they show all their wins, but I never see their losses. And I'm always like, okay, you made a scalp. You made a scalp. Did you ever lose a trade? You know what I mean? Like, did you ever lose? So. You also have the 21 crossing other moving averages, which is a bullish sign, in my humble opinion. You're resetting on the stochastics and you're getting ready for another bigger move. Sketchy times to trade yet again, you know? Sketchy times to trade. So our lifer might not be helping much in group today. I have a company coming over. So silly, man. Uh, their cut, uh, as in their capital gains tax, is not enough. Yeah, SEC just like, oh, you made a bunch of money. We want to take some from you. That's all this is about, everyone. I just want to make this really clear. It's all about the money. All right? Don't be too, uh, don't be too crazed. All right? Now the pump's about to happen. Now, see, now I'm lost another 17 the other way. So insane. But I have the guts to show you what I'm doing live and not worry about it. That's the key. Right, most people want to hide that loss or you know get embarrassed. Oh, I swung trade Pepe like a boss. I'll tell you that. Dollar dollar bills, yo. Uh, let's take a look at. Someone said Pepe is out of control. So I like this total market cap move back to the upside. Now, if we lose this channel, that will change. And it is a rising wedge that could break to the downside. I get it. It's like a broadening rising wedge. But as long as we can kind of loop, get a recovery here, get a MACD move, and we get a move back to the upside at 1.43 trillion. All right. Pepe, let's take a look at Pepe. I'm interested. You should be interested as well. What's up with Pepe? Maxi, KuCoin. I like the Maxi Pepe. It was out there longer. Someone like Pepe. I love when people say Pepe's like out of control and like it's up like 5%. I just like, I'm like, okay, like Pepe got a pump, like an inverted Bart Simpson back to the upside, back to 11. Oh my God, Pepe's taking over. It's going all the way to the moon. You know, it's like, it's just funny to me. Um, Pepe's going crazy. Like, you know. Crazy is 9 to 11. You know, I just, I don't know, man. But to get a nice boom back to the upside. And again, I'm still in Pepe. I believe Pepe's long-term going to do pretty well. I, mean, I know you think I'm insane, but, you know, it had its first initial pump. One day we'll look back, it'll probably be somewhere up in here and people will remember these times. All right? If Bitcoin can resurge, if the total market cap can resurge, then Pepe will follow. If Bitcoin has a struggle and Bitcoin dumps, then Pepe will dump. That's what people don't realize. Everything follows Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the king. Whatever happens to Bitcoin happens to Bitcoin. And look, massive, you know, some long liquidations now on the either end. And now it's getting your short liquidations back to the upside too as well. Price action is getting extra volatile right now. We had this bar of liquidity. We did touch it. So you could say we touched the bar of liquidity and then they started to build longs on the other end. And that's why Bookmap's amazing, but they can, they can spoof. They can pull away orders, push away an order. Like, it's like 80% accurate, but some days it's not going to give you everything. You know, I just want to make that really clear. Now they're liquidating the shorts. Now they're liquidating the shorts at 26,050, 26, right? Right. 
And I still wouldn't have been in the money, right? Because that initial trade, now I'm down $20 at 3% on 500, which pisses me off. I'll be honest. I'm not happy about it at all. No, definitely not. Five minute was low too when I opened it. You know, you want to see the fight. And that's why I didn't understand how the five minute was low and the seven minute was. I had never seen that. Usually they're both pretty close. All right. High seals is out of control. I should. Uh, I should have got that bottom when I was charting it. Never followed up. Next trade, though. Amen. Pamp it. Long and strong. Let's go. Shout out to all coin DGEN. Must stops right as Crypto Lifer says he's not happy. Uh, funny. That's the lever trading, bro, for me, too. Right? Very difficult. Very, very difficult. And you, the, the other thing is you have to put so much time in to get good at it. To me... At that point, you've missed how to research a coin. You've missed a lot of other things that could have made you more money. That that's my that's my dichotomy with lever trading. All right, getting better at managing myself though. Yeah, so all you got to do is stick to the script and either take a stop or don't. Also, you only need to win three out of ten trades, four out of ten trades. You could lose seven trades straight, you know, and four, three trades could pay for it. Oh, we love the high coins. Let's talk about it. The high coins are actually booming today. They're what you play. Like, let's talk about high coins today. We like high coins. High seals banging to the upside for 70%. Look at the size of that thing moving. Pepe up, which is the nice, you know, they had Pepe down yesterday. Pepe up today. Pepe up is a coin you can trade on KuCoin, all right? For And it basically is a leverage trading coin. I still got to research why it says two to four. I'll ask them about that. I don't understand. High friends up 25%. High friends, interesting. It's kind of got a shoulder and a head and a shoulder vibe too. I wouldn't be surprised if high friends can make a bit of a gain. I would watch that. Yeah, four hours says high friends is about to blast to the upside. And honestly, you could look at it like this was the flag. And you got a measured move that really can make it make bacon on the beach. Then you look at your smaller time frames. Interesting. High friends could make gains of 80%. Pretty tight in the channel. Moving averages are in a pretty good spot too as well. They could be better, but they're not that bad. You look at the Fibonacci from low to high, and we bounced off the 618 golden pocket. Now we're above the 382. It's a very strong area of resistance. You get above the 382, you can get a big move coming. Synapse, sin, please. My high beans up. Let's get some news, buddy. You guys want the news, huh? All right. Let's break it down and talk about the news. I'll be right back with the news. Hello, my name is Samuel James Price, and I do a show every single day, The Crypto Lifer Show, and I come out all the time. We do live trading, speculative trading, talk about ideas, go over investments, and more. And uh, with that being said, ooh, wow, they just went to 26200 and got everybody out on those longs, uh, on those shorts, and just liquidated the shorts to the upside, right? That means I probably would have gotten stopped out of the trade. We'll take a look at it in a second. So U.S. doesn't need more digital currency because it has the dollar, says SEC's Gensler. Gensler's comments follow landmark suits filed this week against crypto exchanges, Binance, and Coinbase. 
U.S. doesn't need any more digital currency, said the SE Securities and Exchange Commission Chief Gary Gensler, as his agency sues Binance and Coinbase for operating unregistered securities exchanges. In an interview with CNBC on Tuesday, Gensler denied claims his approach was muddying the legal position around crypto and also suggests there was parallels between his case against Binance Chief Executive Officer Chin Zhao and the criminal case against FTX founder Sam Bankman-Fried. We don't need more digital currency. We already have digital currency. It's called the U.S. dollar, he said. We have not seen, and it's funny he's calling the U.S. dollar a digital currency because it is a number. They don't have the dollars, right? Uh, we have not seen over centuries that economies and the public need more than one way to move value. Wow. The SEC sued Binance on Monday and Coinbase on Tuesday, offering services such as brokerage and clearing on allegedly regulated securities. Gensler will seek to prove that thousands of tokens tradable on two of the biggest crypto venture resemble investment contracts that should have been registered with his agency. Rather than mere means of payment, all we have to do is show that one of them is a security and they should be properly registered, he said. Uh, there's been clarity for years about the nature of securities law and added brushing off concerns that crypto firms have been left facing uncertain enforcement. These intermediaries need to come into compliance. Gensler said that Binance affiliate Sigma Chain boosted the volumes and corrupted the numbers because of the lack of controls, adding that the public can draw the parallels as you wish with the case of Sam Bankman fried who is currently awaiting trials for uh, charge fraud. The SEC suit does not allege fraud by Zhao, but asks for civil penalties alongside a permanent ban on him acting as an officer or directing of any securities issuer. Now, remember, uh, their, their reach isn't too far as Binance is not a U.S. company. Uh, I think they're based in Malta. And they're also, if you can see recently, Binance is making big deals and connections with some of the biggest world economies in the, in the zone. So um, it, it, it's like Binance doesn't really care. You know what I mean? They'll pay a fine if they have to, or they're just going to stop doing business here in the United States. Like, all they're doing is scaring off innovation. That's what everyone keeps saying, and I don't think they realize it. Uh, what they see is the hegemony of the dollar is getting crushed, right? We got BRICS. We got uh, Russia wanting to do trade deals in oil. Uh, we have the yuan coming in as an oil trade deal. And this is like, if we lose this stance and then everyone will start using cryptocurrency, they're just, they're trying to hold on to as much of the piece of the pie for the dollar as possible. And it's looking very desperate. Uh, you can obviously see that there's something going on here. And however, he's the fall man. How are they making him do this? We don't know. Maybe they have dirt on him on the back end and someone is holding it against him. Like, you never know if, be, if these people are being blackmailed to do this type of stuff. Because it seems like he must be going through a lot of stress just to do this. And it looks like he's being coerced by someone on the back end. So when you think about it logically, there's something else going on here that's kind of, uh, it's, got, it's got me pretty up in arm. It's pretty interesting. Um, there's more to the story, really. And you can see it clearly. Once someone starts kind of getting like pointing fingers at every single thing, like how many cases can you just keep coming out with? Um, and we know that not all cryptocurrencies are securities. When you can mine a cryptocurrency, it becomes a utility. When you can use it for DeFi and you can, you can use it, you know, it becomes a utility. Uh, when it actually becomes a voting mechanism, it becomes a utility. Uh, there's so many different ways to use cryptocurrency as a utility. And a utility, we know, is not a security. A security and utilities aren't the same. So there needs to be firmer regulation, and they refuse to do that. They keep using this 1934 Securities Act and saying, pigeonhole these cryptocurrencies into these. It's almost like they, like a rhombus is a square, but a square is not a rhombus. Like you could say it's a square at one point, but it's, it's, not, it's not its definition. Uh, this is an issue that we keep seeing over and over again. And until we have open discussion and we let everyone kind of get in on it and the people really have a say, and he keeps saying that they're representing the people, but it's kind of sad because it doesn't look like that's the case, all right? SEC sues Coinbase on unregistered, security, unregistered securities. SEC sues Coinbase on unregistered securities exchange allegations. The suit comes a day after the SEC sued Binance, all right? The U.S. Securities Exchange Commission sued the U.S. cryptocurrency Coinbase on alleged violating federal securities law a day after filing a similar suit against Binance. They're going after the two biggest names in cryptocurrency. They're going after cryptocurrency, as clear as day. Um, according to the SEC, Coinbase is operated as an unregistered broker and exchange. We already talked about this on the live, too. And I even had the actual filing here where we kind of went over it, talked about the violations. It's a 100-page document. If you want to sit and read the whole thing, you may. Uh, but for the most part, they're just trying to say that, and they started naming cryptocurrencies, too, which is interesting. Uh, wouldn't they go after the cryptocurrency themselves? So they haven't gone after these cryptocurrencies, but they're claiming that the, they're, used, you know, they're going after the exchange. To me, it's like splitting hairs here. Like, which is it? What do you want to do? Um, and why, why are you so vicious against these exchanges? Coinbase allegedly fails deprived investors of critical protections, including rule books that prevent fraud and manipulation. 
And again, if you care about us, then let's have open discussion. If you care about us, then I'll see the head of the SEC should be voted into office by the people. Um, these too many government officials are appointed. Um, and what happens when someone gets appointed is they run the government, but they were never voted into office. So you have these people that were never voted into office that are making our lives difficult. And it's kind of sad because it's like they never got the resi- they never got the, the, the stamp of approval from the people. The people never put these people into office. You know what I mean? It's pretty vicious if you think about it. And it's strange. And it makes me wonder, like, where we're going. And that's how totalitarian governments get formed. When you put people into office that the people don't vote for. And eventually, what's the difference between, you know, a communist regime and what's happening here? I mean, to me, I don't see a difference. Like, we are going to tell you what you're going to do, and that's it. We don't care who you voted in. We don't care who represents you. We don't care about Congress. We don't care about the Senate. We're going to do whatever we do, and we're going to shove it down your throat. I just, uh, I find it really, really strange. And that's not what America was made on. It just wasn't. So, um, yeah, a bit weird to me. Um, and, uh, yeah, it just is what it is here, right? Binance sees $700 million in Ethereum outflows amid SEC charges. Highest since March crypto crisis. The world's largest crypto exchange, Binance, saw outflows of more than $70 million on the Ethereum network alone on Monday after news broke out the exchange is being sued by the U.S. Securities Commission. Uh, the news outflows was shared by on-chain analyst platform Nansen on Twitter on Tuesday with the tweet noting that the net flows, even in the past hour, continues to be negative. According to Nansen's data, the 24-hour net outflow from Binance on the Ethereum network and ERC-20 tokens and stablecoins now stands at $778 million. Um, so they definitely took a bite out of Binance's business, right? Um, people started to take their funds off of the exchange. Uh, and again, it even makes people just, you know, and again, at the, at the, at the, the silver lining in this is we should be our own banks. And we should all have our own money on exchanges. We should be trading peer-to-peer with, like, some type of inter-wallet connectability. That's really where I want to see cryptocurrency go. You should be able to make trades from wallet to wallet. You should be able to hit, hit the exchange, and that should be the kind of the way you go about it. So I like this in a way because it tells people, put your money on a hardware wallet. Stop waiting for exchanges to hold your funds. And, you know, and so it's like it's a win in a way for the cryptocurrency industry because it still pushes people to be their own bank, which was the whole point in the first place. However, you know, centralized exchanges do hold a, a value in our commerce, and it does help people. So uh, this is something that's interesting. And uh, it, it, there's a dichotomy here that we could both discuss and break down. Uh, but, the, you know, at the end of the day, they did what they had to do. If they never came out with that lawsuit, if Jim Cramer never made those tweets, and, that's, and again, as people want to help people, that's putting a lot of fear into people's minds. So Jim Cramer is a fear monger as far as I'm concerned. And people that use fear to get their point across usually are filled with fear themselves or they're on some type of negative frequency vibe. It doesn't usually pan out well for even that person. So uh, may God bless them all, but uh, a bit strange to me. And that's the news for the day. It's kind of sad. We're getting hit hard from every single angle. But again, I have most of my money on Bitcoin in, an, in a centralized exchange. I'm good to go. So there you have it. Um, and there we kind of break it down right? Let's look back at BTC as it's getting a little bit of a push up out of the seven minute flag that I initially did have going. Um, This was the initial trade, right? Um, And the one minute flag did push to the upside. I would have won that trade to the upside had I just left it alone. It's interesting. Someone did mention that leave it, leave the trade alone. So uh, the, the one minute did break to the upside. I did see this flag at the beginning, stuck to my guns. I'd been up and been able to get in and out. Also kind of a shoulder, a head and a right shoulder there. It's hard to see, but it's interesting. So the one minute did break out. However, there's some bearish divergence here now on the one minute. It's very strong, telling us that this likely could end up being our high for the day. All right. If you're just coming into the channel, one thing that I discussed and wanted to talk about and show you was the fact that I see a diamond beginning to form here uh, for Bitcoin. Wow. Look at that pumpage now, though. Massive short squeeze for Bitcoin as we're getting up to 11,000, 91,000 and more short squeezes. The order book is also lighter right, with people taking money off the exchange and stuff and probably less people wanting to trade for the day. It's giving people a nasty taste in their mouth in, in general. So the futures market showing some signs of a hammering, um, right, and just kind of doing what it's thing. I don't know why that lock just happened. I don't know what I uh, – show high trade control panel. Interesting. So 401, 40,000 and liquidations now as we go to 26,000. 100. 
that was my stop, right? So I should have been stopped out of the trade, and I did. Lost about $20. 40 bucks in total, right? So there you have it. Um, stick to the trade. You, know, you never know. Uh, I'm going to watch it closely, but it is what it is. That was the trade there. Stop loss was at 20100 and we got taken out on that stop, you know. Does look like we could still continue lower based on the bigger time frames. The one hour and the 15 don't look amazing, but wow, we're continuing to get this massive pump. And what I what I believe this is happening is because people are leaving the exchanges out of altcoins. They're freaking out of altcoins. Like if they're in Cardano, they're selling it to Bitcoin. Um, they're selling. So everyone's getting the news now. More people are seeing the news. They're getting out to lunch. They're really starting to see the news. Or they were at work too, and now it's lunchtime, and they have time to get to their accounts, time to see what's happening. So at lunch, they're running to their their exchange, and they're just dumping funds, um, and they're dumping them out of you know into Bitcoin. You know what I mean? Because Bitcoin, we know, can't be called a security. So people were deciding, hey, you know what? I'm just going to stick to what's hot. Also, if we just stuck to this one hour bullish divergence, it did tell us a move was coming to the upside. Massive move for Bitcoin now on that move. That one minute chart is starting to rip to the upside. My initial idea was spot on that we were going to get a push to the upside. So it's interesting. Uh, however, I do yeah, I kind of look at this less like a diamond now as we continue to get higher and higher. But I still see some diamond vibes coming out of this idea here. You know, it has a diamond feel to it. And at one point, what goes up will come down. They've liquidated enough shorts, but look, a massive short squeeze for Bitcoin here on Bookmap. Continuing to nail the shorts to the upside here. 26,140, getting that bounce back to the upside. And it's the outflow of people jumping back into Bitcoin, knowing that Bitcoin is not a security. In my humble opinion, that's kind of the main reason we're seeing this bigger move. Um, we just broke a five-minute origin. Boom, baby, boom. Keep the losses small. Amen. Bart to the upside. Reckon Gary Gensler ringtone is a wrecking ball. Pepe doing damage. Could not see uh, what you went to and click the bear market ad was in the way. Had to turn off uh, security on Brave. Just hit, the, hit this thing and click the little thing off, man. It's right here. This was not ever in the way. That's a complete... That, that, I have to be honest. That has to, I, I think you're kind of being facetious here because this never changes. No matter where I go or what I'm doing, this doesn't change. And you would click it right here, and it's on the screen. I can, like, I can see my screen. Like, I can see the bear market thing right there. And I, when I click on this, and then I show you this, uh, I guess I can't do them together. But uh, it clearly isn't not blocked by the bear market. So I, I don't want to call you a liar, but, the, the, you know, and I shouldn't. But it, 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 something's weird because you're saying that you couldn't see this, but it's clearly not being covered. When I look at it, it's not. Yeah, see, it just disappeared, right? The white is going right here. Right, and you if we do it really quick, right, and then I'm gonna switch really fast, and you're gonna see that the white bo box was right here. It was not covered by the bear market thing. So I, I, I don't know where you come off saying that, because to me, like clearly, physically, that you, you you sound like you're, you know, I don't know. I'm not trying to be weird, but I, I'm just kind of a, I'm an OCD person who sticks to the script, and you know, I just have to. Uh, could not see where you went to click the bear market ad was in the way. How to turn off security on Brave. Yes, yeah, I, I, maybe, oh, maybe this was, was out of the way. No. Okay, yeah, you can't see the, you can't see the lion. I get it. But there's a lion face. There's a lion face right here, and you click the lion face. I thought you knew that, and then you click the shield on or off. Okay. Sorry, I just didn't understand what you were saying. I was like, but I can see it, you know. I don't know what you're saying. All right. That's the end of the show, everybody, for the day. I'm exhausted by the news. I'm exhausted by the up and down price action. It is out of control. Um, and it's been a nasty market, to be honest. It's been a tough market, and it hasn't been easy by any means. Uh, getting overbought here on the RSI in the 7, I wouldn't be surprised if this is just, you know, kind of a cash grab up. We come back down on this diamond further to the downside. However, what I like to see is the bigger time frame is bouncing back to the upside. A uh, massive candle on the four-hour time frame as people were jumping in to Bitcoin. And we talked about the four-hour last night getting a bounce back to the upside. So far, so good. So we're getting the bounce back to the upside on the four-hour time frame, which was suggested by the bullish divergence. And if you watch my update last night, I was suggesting we would get a bounce back probably to the top of the channel, right? It'll take its time. There'll be a lot of ups and downs on the way, but... You know, when you're at the top, bottom, top, bottom, you're likely to come back to the top of the channel. So that's what I see happening. Anything could happen. 
in, in the short term. But that's, you know, the most probability is to me that we end up here somewhere hitting the top of this channel to the upside. So could be a shoulder ahead on a right shoulder there and we could get that move out. So that's what I see happening for Bitcoin. I'll keep you up to date in the trading group. We'll go over Bitcoin every four to five hours. We'll talk about different coins that we're seeing. We'll see if there's any other movement in the market. But right now, the market's a little spooked too. Uh, I want to see how kind of things flag out and figure themselves out um, beforehand. So shout out to everybody on the live. Thank you for jumping on in. Appreciate each and every one of you for being here. Sharing your most precious asset with me and that is your time. And people just leave the stream exactly at 12 o'clock. It's kind of funny every single time. Even um, Shout out to the 399 in Super Chat. Shout out to the four new members. Shout out to everybody here on the live. And thank you for everyone that jumped on in. I appreciate each and every one of you. Um, apologize for losing my trade. Kind of sucks. Like I want to win every single time I'm live. You know, I'm like, dang. Um, and uh, I appreciate it. And uh, I'll get to these super chats tomorrow, man. I appreciate them. Uh, let's take a look. We'll look at AVAX, I guess. You know, that's it. Every time I get caught up trading, it takes away from what I'm looking at. AVAX looks pretty nice, right? It's kind of consolidating closer. It's very low in the zone. We take a look at our daily and our four hour time frame. Daily is getting a little higher than I would like it to get. I look at my three day to kind of see the bigger move. Three day chart suggests we could get a bounce for AVAX. Uh, you know, not my favorite project right now per se, but it is back near those lows when it started about in, in the market down here back in July of 2021 before it had a massive rally. Interesting. AVAX is an amazing, uh, you know, it, it's an okay, it's, it's cool. Like I don't, I'm not hating on AVAX. I don't own any. But I believe it can get a bounce. I don't know. The three-day chart looks good to me. Market's a little weird right now, I'll be honest. With Bitcoin dipping all around and all coins getting flipped around. Um, you know, if you're accumulating AVAX for the long term, could be a good idea. Again, I'm not a financial advisor. and I think I say and do should be taken as financial advice. But we'll see. And look at Bitcoin continuing to rip to 26,190. I mean, there's more and more people are buying Bitcoin, right? Because they're trying to get out of the zone, right? And so I started off with the Bitcoin trade. Like my man said, should have kept it. Look at this too. High Friends just got a massive push to the upside, continuing. We just talked about this making a move. So there you go. That's a beautiful, look, 15% gain out of nowhere. Uh, you know, we kind of showed you the shoulder, the head and the shoulder. Said there was some life there. Quick 15% gain out of High Friends or 12%. And it looks like there could be some more. It's pumping with the market. Home market's going to move up a little more with Bitcoin too as it continues to get excitable and happy so uh there you have it bitcoin running the show here getting the bounce back to the upside bitcoin don't care baby and remember bitcoin is a a world market if people see that we're getting attacked and u.s exchange are getting attacked that's going to make people realize that bitcoin can grow in other countries and so other countries might even get more bullish on bitcoin so shout out to everybody here on the live appreciate each and every one of you for being here thank you for jumping on in and someone asked about sin s-u-s-d-t um and Synapse, I think he asked about. Is that what it was? Funny, it had that shoulder head in the shoulder. It has this giant rounded bottom. Let's take a look at it on the daily time frame. And previous support becomes resistance. It's, it's struggling right now on the daily with these wicks to the upside and to the downside. A little overbought on the stochastics. RSI still has some room. It's in a bit of a flag. Look at the four hour. I feel like it broke out. I don't, honestly, it's got some weird market structure, but it broke out of this flag to the upside. You got a massive bearish divvy here as this swings down. Well, that swings up, which tells me to be careful. It's at the bottom of its barrel. It tried a cup and handle move to the upside. It does have moving averages crossing. They're tight enough. I'd look for it to break out and retest that zone, right? That's how you know it actually has some momentum. But um, I don't know, man. I'm not a fan of this right now. And honestly, the four hour looks like it's going to dump on you back to the downside. At least make a shoulder head and possibly a right shoulder here. Then we could reconvene for sin. All right. Thank you so much, Gina Bombino, Lakochi Coker, everyone here on the live. Appreciate you all for being here. Thank you for jumping on in. And um, one last thing I want to look at is BTC USD on Coinbase. Uh, I mean, on KuCoin. And just talk about how we did see this one-minute flag playing to the upside in general. When I started the live, I saw how this could break on out. And that was like my initial idea, right? And we did get the pump to the upside. So that trade did play out. I should have stayed stuck to my guns 
and stuck to my trade. All right. Um, and I would have won that trade. So again, maybe take a lesson from me, stick to your guns. You know what I mean? Stick to your position originally. And, uh, it's looking pretty good. Like the one minute wants to continue up. And I did recognize the flag and my, my trading instinct decided that we could go higher. Right. Again, I ended up getting up. The trade started to go down the other way. I started trading this trade went the other way. I cut off the trade for like, I don't know, $14 loss. Then I switched short and then we pumped up and I cut that trade off for a 14, you know, six twenty dollars loss, probably lost about 35 bucks, uh, on the trade. So, um, which wasn't amazing because I had, I was playing with 500, so almost 10%. Um, and again, you don't win every trade. It's how you deal with the losses. That's the key. And I would just keep watching these smaller flags as they continue to want to pump to the upside. Show me the charts and I'll show you the news. People are running out of altcoins to buy into Bitcoin because they know Bitcoin's not a security. It's making Bitcoin even more bullish, if you ask me, which makes the whole market more bullish. So as the SEC tries to collapse crypto, all they're doing is collapsing altcoins, but they're making Bitcoin very, very strong. That could be the plan in the first place for the, the overlords of Bitcoin to show us that Bitcoin was the answer to begin with, right? Got to get to the laptop and see if I can scalp it. LOL, high coins, high seals, maybe crazy overbought now. Alluvium, beautiful falling wedge. Amen. Once again, awesome stream, Sam. Keep up the amazing work. Shout out to everybody here on the live. Thank you for being here. Please comment, like, and subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. You can find out when I post my next video. Remember, if you came to the channel, then you're already doing the right thing. Uh, a bunch more lemon water here to kind of keep us situated. And remember, crypto is life. I love you all. Have a wonderful night, wonderful day, afternoon, no matter where you are in the world. And I'll see you on the next live.